Hey y'all, I'm here to present the updated Upheaval Walking Arsenal build for Season 1. I made a leveling guide a few weeks ago before the season started, but this is going to be the finished version. I'm only level 80 in game, but I have everything planned out already for the character using the E4 Builds website. I got a link here, which I'll later, but I have everything planned out already. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of blast through all the important stuff for the build. If you've seen some of my other videos on this build, a lot of this stuff is going to be uh, reiterated information. Uh, but I will have a section later on. Check the timestamps in the description for video player. And you can have a, a whole section where I'm going to talk about other alternatives to the build, other skill usages, other passives, all this other stuff. So if you want to have questions about, can I use this skill, this passive, this aspect or whatever, I'm going to have stuff uh, talking about a lot of other alternatives to the build. And it's on dedicated section, but I'm going to keep the beginning just all informational stuff so you know what the build is about. So, without further ado, let's hop in game and I show you uh, the skill tree. Alright, so for our skill tree, I'm going to pull it up here. We're going to be pulling uh, Lunging Strike. It's going to be a big mobility skill for Barbarian. It's super good. Pick up Enhanced Lunging Strike so we can pick up Combat Lunging Strike for the... Uh, source of Berserking, we're going to be Berserking quite often, almost all the time actually. This is going to be one of our main sources of Berserking. Our core skill of choice is going to be Upheaval, with Enhanced Upheaval and then Furious Upheaval. Gives us a stacking damage multiplier when we hit with anything that's not Upheaval. This synergizes a lot uh, with the rest of the build as well. Defensive skill of choice is going to be Iron Skin. We're going to pair this with the Iron Warrior aspect, which I'll talk more about later. Give us uh, a source of damage reduction and uh, Unstoppable. Pick up Enhanced Iron Skin and Strategic Iron Skin for a source of Fortify. We're going to skip all the Brawling skills. We are going to pick up the Movement Speed from Swiftness, as well as the Aggressive Resistance. Two points in Aggressive Resistance, just as a... We need one point anyway to get to Prolific Fury for Fury Generation while Berserking, but we ended up putting uh, an extra free point at the end of the skill tree that put an extra little bit of damage reduction. Especially after this, this just got buffed in patch 1.1.1, so even better. One of the other real core abilities, it's not a core skill, but it might as well be, is Death Blow for huge single target damage, paired with the increased uh, damage to bosses, as well as Warrior's Death Blow for another source of Berserking. Pick up uh, these three passives as well, going to be Pit Fighter for increased damage to close enemies and distant damage reduction, critical hit chance against mobilized under slowed enemies, and the exposed vulnerability so when we use a weapon mastery skill our next core skill will make enemies vulnerable for three seconds this happens pretty frequently so it's very reliable for at least this play style one point hamstring just because it's still kind of good it's at least one source of slow uh, on the build it's not as consistent anymore but i think it's still worth picking up we're gonna pick up still grasp as well this is going to be another huge source of vulnerable and berserking for the build it's going to be using you know, enhanced Steel Grasp makes enemies vulnerable when they get chained in. And then Fire Steel Grasp gives us another two seconds of Berserking. We are going to be fortified almost permanently with uh, whenever the build fully comes online. So one point Think Skin so we can get access to Counter Offensive. A 12% increased damage on all of our damage when we have at least 50% of our max life in Fortify. Then we're going to get an extra 6% damage reduction while we are fortified. Ultimate of Choice, we're going to be using Iron Maelstrom specifically because of Supreme Iron Maelstrom reducing the cooldown by one second when we do weapon swap. And of course, we're going to be weapon swapping a lot of the time because of Walking Arsenal. We are going to be using all of the four weapons from uh, our Barbarian, our two-handed bludgeoning, two-handed slashing, and our two-handed weapons. Or sorry, two one-handed weapons. This pairs very well with the Supreme Iron Maelstrom cooldown. And lastly, we're going to pick up Heavy Handed for increased crit damage on two-handed weapons and then Wallop for more vulnerable damage that is going to be the skill tree one thing i do want to quickly highlight and i've talked about this in the past that since we are using uh walking arsenal with the builds we want to benefit from all the bonuses as much as possible so the reason or the way we do that is by assigning certain skills to certain weapon types i'm going to suggest we use the dual wield one-handed weapons for our lunging strike which will both uh, make it uh, attack a little bit faster with the faster attack speed on one-handed weapons, but also so that we can buff uh, upheaval and death flow with our two-handed weapons, which are definitely going to hit uh, harder uh, each time we use them. For death flow, I have it set to, uh, or should have it set to auto select. Uh, for me, it ends up being the two-handed bludgeoning weapon. It might be the two-handed slashing weapon for you at any given moment, 
but I set death blow to uh, auto select so that it's going to be using my highest damage weapon and then upheaval will just be set to whatever it didn't get picked to for death blow so in this case it ends up being the slashing uh, 200 slashing weapon for me on pc if you just hit s to pull up the little skills menu here if you click the middle mouse button you can see the uh, arsenal selection at the bottom there uh, gets cycled through so try and have uh, all three of your main damaging skills your basic skill your core skill and your death blow all using your uh, different weapon types to benefit fully from walking arsenal four aspects Helmet, put on Numbing Wrath. This gives us Fury Generation when we, uh, or Fortify Generation when we're at Max Fury. Sorry, I said that backwards. This is going to be one of the two major sources of Fortify uh, for the build. Chestplate, we're going to pick up the Iron Skin, grants Unstoppable, and gives us damage reduction. Gloves, we're going to put on Expectant. Basic skills will buff our next core skill up to 30% damage. Pants, we're going to put on the Disobedience Passive to give us the Stacking Armor bonus. Uh, for another really nice source of uh, defensive survivability. Boots, this is going to be one of the super critical aspects in my opinion. It's going to be Weapon Masters. So your Weapon Mastery skills have an additional charge. This counts for both Death Blow and uh, Steel Grass, of course, being both Weapon Mastery skills. The Lucky Hit effect for stunning is kind of irrelevant. It's really about the extra Weapon Mastery uh, charge. Or Weapons. We're going to be putting uh, Limitless Rage, at least I did, on my 2 handed bludgeoning weapon. So each point of fear you generate while at max will buff your next core skill. I'm going to quickly talk about my amulet, which has Edge Masters on it. So skills deal up to increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast. You could maybe swap these out if you want. Put Limitless Rage on the amulet or put Edge Masters uh, on the 2 handed weapon. I don't think there's, there's probably a right choice here for more damage. But uh, this is kind of what I went with. But you could probably make a case where you maybe you want to put Edge Masters on the two-handed weapon instead. But I'm just bringing that up as a specific note. For our uh, other two-handed weapon, you really, 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 really need Encroaching Wrath for this build. It'll buff your next weapon mastery skill by up to 200% when it's on a two-handed weapon. Uh, you could put this on the two-handed bludgeoning weapon as well. It doesn't really matter which two-handed weapon it is on as long as it's on one of your two-handed weapons. 200% multiplied bonus damage is absolutely gargantuan when we're going to be ideally pairing this with death flow to make it deal millions of damage and it hits super hard one-shotting bosses dungeon bosses one-shotting elites very easily so this this is one of the other super duper critical aspects for the build for our one-handed weapons we're just going to put on some extra nice to haves so rapid for more basic skill attack speed and then we're also going to be using Berserk Ripping as another uh, very consistent source of bleed. And since we are Berserking almost all the time, then we basically are bleeding enemies all the time. Like I mentioned, the Amulet is going to be using Edge Masters. So again, do up to uh, bonus damage based on your primary resource when cast. For our rings, ended up using Berserk Fury for the time being. I'll talk about this a bit later, but there uh, is the Relentless, Relentless Arms Master aspect which gives you fury generation when you have all three bonuses from the walking arsenal passive active i think that's probably going to be my ideal choice but this is uh, all i've got for now i haven't gotten that aspect to drop yet so i'm using this one instead which is a really nice alternative or a very consistent source of uh, fury generation and for our last aspect we're going to be using the accelerating aspect aspect can't speak today uh critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by up to 25 percent this is a global increase to attack speed, so you do have to use a core skill for the bonus, uh, but the attack speed does work on all of your skills, your basic skills, your Iron Maelstrom, Deathblow, all that stuff. So, Anyway, aspects done for Paragon board. Uh, I will show you what I'm, where I'm currently at, and then I'll transition over to the D4 Builds uh, website to kind of showcase some other important notes. So for the starter board, we're going to pick up Mortal Draw. Mainly for the additional bonus, if we gain additional crit chance when we swap weapons. I don't think this stacks with your actual crit chance on your character sheet. I think this is like its own independent 18% chance to crit. I'm not entirely sure on that, but 18% chance to crit at all is still really good. So I do like this skill a lot. And we are weapon swapping. Almost every single attack will be a weapon swap more or less. So thumbs up in my book second glyph or the first glyph board i should say is going to be the warbringer board 
for the uh, Fortify when we spend 75 Fury. This is essentially two upheavals will grant us a 12% of our max life as Fortify. For the Glyph Socket, we're going to be using Exploit. This is insanely good on basically every class, especially for Barbarians, Druids, and Rogues, because we have the uh, additional bonus for those classes where the first enemy hit will be vulnerable. And vulnerable damage is a straight multiplier on all the rest of all of your damage, so vulnerable damage is insanely powerful in this game uh, for the time being. So Exploit Glyph both gives us a source of vulnerable as well as more vulnerable damage. And we'll pick up the raw power node while we're at it. We're going to path up to pick up Hungering Fury. Uh, this is not really super critical, but it's sort of a nice to have a little bit. Uh, but it's mainly so that we can pick up the Orbringer node. Because you can kind of get away without this. We do have Fortify Generation from the Numbing Wrath uh, helmet that I talked about earlier. It gives us Fortify when we uh, generate Fury above our max. But I think... Without this, it still feels a little slow in my opinion, so I do like having this personally, but you could maybe make the case where you could actually get rid of like all of these points and put them somewhere else instead. For the next Paragon board, we're going to be picking up Carnage, so critical hits while Berserking will increase our attack speed. This is super consistent, so it's just a free 8% critical or uh, attack speed bonus. For the Glyph Socket, we're going to be using Blood Feeder. This is mainly for the additional bonus where we get additional 5% crit chance against bleeding enemies and enemies are going to be bleeding almost every single time we hit them or basically every single time we hit them so a free 5% crit chance is definitely not bad. Pick up both the Brash nodes for damage reduction and the Fierce node for damage while berserking. We need to path over to Dexterity nodes anyway so we might as well pick them up. Again, pick up Carnage on the way here. And so far I've pathed up here because this board has a bunch of vulnerable damage on it, and that is the Decimator uh, Paragon board. We don't really care about the lucky hit uh, from the Legendary node, even though it is only two points away from the, my current pathing. I still don't think this is worth it, because this lucky hit effect is just super unlikely to happen. And we have so many better ways of applying vulnerables that I don't think this is ever worth picking up, in my opinion. Uh, but we do have a bunch of other sources of vulnerable, for example, for example the Pillage node for more vulnerable and more armor. There's three more vulnerable damage nodes up here, which I will pick up later. For the Glyph Socket, we're going to pick up the Might Glyph. This gives us a bonus to all magic nodes within range. And the additional bonus, where we deal bonus damage with two weapons, is nice, but not like super important. But the bonus to magic nodes is super, super critical, because there are vulnerable damage nodes here. These are normally 5% increased vulnerable damage, but... Uh, they'll go up to an additional 125% to uh, all magic nodes. So this is what, like 12.5% or something like that? Um, something like that. Uh, whenever this glyph is fully leveled up. Currently, what, level 15? Yeah, there's going to be even more vulnerable damage, as well as the rare node for even more vulnerable damage. There's also even the damage reduction from vulnerable enemies. And since enemies are actually going to be vulnerable pretty often with this setup, uh, luckily enough, then we get a nice little extra source of damage reduction as well. So I do like that a lot. And then we're going to path over to even more, you guessed it, vulnerable damage. And the damage with 200 slashing weapons is, it's just a freebie, but it's really about the uh, vulnerable damage note here as well. That's currently where my Barbarian is at, at level 80. But like I mentioned, I do have a D4 builds link here, ready to go. This has everything that I've talked about so far, as well as the fully... Uh, Hit it out to Paragon board. A few extra things kind of mentioned here. Uh, but the one big thing I want to point out is that from the uh, second board that we add, so we start with the Warbringer no uh, board and then we go to the Carnage board. Eventually, I'm going to path down here, grab the Enrage node for uh, damage while berserking. And then eventually, we're going to go pick up the. Uh, what board is it? Got. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Here it is. Uh, weapons master board we don't really care at all about the uh, fairy when weapon swapping we do weapon swap very often but the placement of this node is like super inconvenient for at least the way that i've set it up i don't really care to uh, try and find a way to path all the way down here because i don't think it's very worth it so instead we're just going to pick up the glyph socket to put in the wrath glyph gives us increased critical strike damage for every five dexterity within range and skills that crit also generate three fury, just a nice extra source of fury. Not super duper important, but it does you know synergize with a few other things. Pick up the raw power with some other physical damage nodes. 
And it's also going to be just a straight armor uh, node here as well with some extra armor points we're going to pick up around there as well. And then finally ended off by picking up the Hunter Killer node. Just, you know, it's there. Damage to elites, movement speed after killing an elite, not too bad. There's also the uh, Brute node for more physical damage, which is, again, whatever. But the, phys the uh, attack speed is definitely why I path down here for a little bit of extra attack speed, which just helps build flow even faster and more smoothly. The last thing I want to mention for this website is going to be, I have all the stats listed out uh, for all of the gear. So this is my perfect roles, essentially, that I would want on all of the gear. So if you want something to reference, if you want to know what stats are good for the build, at least what I recommend, I have all of that listed here. So I have a blast with that. I'll very quickly mention the expertise. We're going to use 200 axe expertise. Just this gives us more vulnerable damage. It's yeah, it's, it's that simple. More vulnerable damage. Good. Thumbs up. Now, for Season 1 specific things, I'm going to be talking about the Malignant Hearts available for Season 1. Which hearts do you use? Here's going to be my suggestions. Tempting Fate gives us critical hit damage, but when we don't crit, we deal less damage. I think the extra crit damage is going to be super worth, especially later on when we have a pretty consistent amount of crit uh, when we start getting into world tier 4 getting ancestral gear with high uh, rolls on crit chance and things like that it's just a straight huge damage spike when you do crit so very good to have i really like punishing speed personally this has been super consistent and with enough attack speed it's happening almost all the time you can knock down enemies relentlessly elites just fall over this is actually like really consistent um, even a lot of elites that like to run around or teleport around or whatever, you can just hit them once with enough attack speed, and if it procs, they're just knocked down immediately. You can hit them with like an upheaval, death blow, boom, they're dead before they can even move or teleport. So it just like locks enemies down. So they don't even move or even attack you at all. This is like secretly a defensive um, heart almost because enemies that are knocked down are not going to be hitting you. So this is uh, really nice to have in my opinion. And of course, the barber with a big asterisk. So the Barber says critical strikes and all subsequent damage within a time window is absorbed and that absorbed damage erupts onto surrounding enemies. I'm suggesting it because the Barber is just insanely strong, but I will say it's a little awkward to play with this build for things like Death Flow, where a lot of times Death Flow will not get its proper reset when something dies, because if it dies to the Barber and not Death Blow, it's not gonna reset the cooldown on death flow so i think it's a little awkward to play with but it is absolutely bonkers strong it is a very 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 strong wrathful part to run in the build uh, but it does make the play style a little awkward in my opinion but it is still very very strong season of the barber it very true and real uh, but there's a couple other ones that i do want to uh pick out specifically if you want to be a bit more defensive uh, oriented, there is the ignore pain for barbarians specifically. There's a just chance that you straight up ignore damage, which is nice, and it also heals you. So, I mean, yeah, if, if you feel like you want to be a bit more uh, defensive oriented, maybe you're playing hardcore or something, I think this would be a very strong pickup. Uh, there's also the revenge heart, so a percentage of incoming damage is suppressed, and then when you use a defensive skill, you will then explode into fire damage. The damage from the fire is kind of irrelevant. The uh, suppressed damage is much more impactful as a defensive uh, heart goes. So, but otherwise, the Tempting Fate is super strong, and I actually really, really love the Punishing Speed heart for the knockdown uh, crowd control effect. All right, so yeah, uh, I hope I didn't take forever, but that is basically everything for the important stuff to show off. As a uh, final segment, I do want, again want to show some uh, other alternatives to the build that I've been asked before in the past. So let's just roll down the skill tree real quickly. I've asked, been asked before, what about using a different core skill? Honestly, I think upheaval is fun, uh, but if you want to use Hammer of the Ancients, I think you can totally send Hammer of the Ancients and uh, make this build work uh, very nicely. I don't think Whirlwind really fits into the playstyle of this build specifically since uh, you'd rather kind of put everything into Whirlwind rather than uh, only using it sometimes. Uh, double Swing definitely can work too as well. You do lose quite a bit of uh, AoE since Upheaval is our main source of AoE damage. Uh, but if you want to maybe do like a, a boss fight, maybe Uber Lilith or something, there's a definitely a 
some justification for double swing. And we're not really based on bleeding at all, so rend I don't think works uh, that well. But uh, Hammer of the Ancients definitely should work, and so should double swing if you want to run, run it that way. If you want to have a different source of Unstoppable without having to use the Iron Warrior aspect, you can actually try running Rallying Cry. This just does have Unstoppable by default. Um, but you might want to end up spending some skill points into Booming Voice at least, just so that you have increased duration on Rallying Cry. Uh, but the good thing about the Iron Skin aspect is that you do also get damage reduction, so that is a, a very nice defensive skill to have um, when you're CC'd by a bunch of elites and you can hit Iron Skin and you have a huge amount of damage reduction and you're back in your feet, you're unstoppable, and you can go back to hopefully killing them as soon uh, as you can right after. Uh, but you can definitely use Rallying Cry instead if you want. And while leveling, I would actually probably suggest Rallying Cry uh, over Iron Skin, which I talked about in my uh, leveling guide video as well. Um, you could maybe use like Kick if you want maybe to not use Steel Grasp, because the main point of Steel Grasp is to pull enemies in, but also to apply Vulnerable and uh, Berserking. But Kick does actually apply Vulnerable, but I don't really like the knockback effect on Kick. Kind of knocks enemies around. I don't love that. Same reason for charge. You know, the charge has the four second vulnerable duration, which is nice to have, but it kind of moves enemies around. They get pushed around. Like, I, I don't really like that. I, I much prefer Steel Grass pulling all the enemies into me, and then I can death flow like five enemies at once, and they all just explode and die. And it makes it very easy to hit them all with upheaval uh, as a follow up instead. So I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Steel Grasp instead, but if you want to maybe make like kick for enhanced kick vulnerable damage work you can definitely do that um i would honestly highly suggest uh, iron maelstrom i wouldn't really use the other uh, ultimates maybe while leveling you can maybe use uh called the ancients but iron maelstrom would definitely be my uh, definitive choice personally there's also unconstrained i've been asked about this in the past this also did just get buffed so now the total damage bonus with unconstrained while berserking is going to be 60 percent and we are berserking all the time so this is still nice to have uh, however, still prefer Walking Arsenal because ideally, like I mentioned in the build websites, I would ideally want to be running uh, Relentless Arms Master. This gives us Fury generation while we have all of the Walking Arsenal key passes active. But uh, I don't use that currently. Uh, I've, I've tried Unconstrained even after the, the buff, and it's still nice to use, but I definitely still prefer uh, Walking Arsenal personally. But I think there's a use case where you could actually use um, either of these. And you can still definitely get away with using unconstrained if you wanted to do that. Uh, for other aspects, um, there's some other like fortify related aspects. There's one when you weapon swap like six times, I believe, uh, was a tempering blows. Yeah. So after six weapon swaps, you gain fortify. This is another option as well, but I prefer the more consistent nature of numbing wrath since we are going to be max three almost all the time uh, when we have all these things kind of going on online. For other um, defensive skills, if you're not using Iron Skin, you can definitely uh, use some other damage reduction relating aspects. For example, Aspect of Might just gives you a flat 20% damage reduction with basic skills. There's also Iron Blood to give you up to 20% um, damage reduction from bleeding enemies as well. These are both not bad choices either. Uh, but ideally, you definitely still want to keep Disobedience for the extra uh, armor uh, stacking buff uh, for sure. Um, yeah, and so I think that about covers it. Pretty sure that covers it. So, uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, any other concerns, comments, whatever, uh, if you think the build sucks or you're whatever, leave them down below. I, I will try and respond to any comments that come my way and answer any questions you all might have. Otherwise, I'll have some miscellaneous dungeon footage at the end of this video. And I thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.